Welcome back, everyone. In this video, we will be covering the second part of Lecture 11. The topic is the binomial option pricing model. So prior to the break, we set up the binomial option pricing model. Now what we will do is we will use the binomial option pricing model to price European call options. Okay, so let's get started. Consider a European call option on our non-dividend paying stock S. The strike of the call option is given by K. The maturity of the call option is T years from now. Our goal is to calculate the price of the call option, C0, and we're going to do so using the binomial model that we took time to set up. Okay. Let's start by adding the call option to our previous binomial model. Originally, we had just two assets, the stock and the bond. The stock had a price of S0 today. This was known. And the stock's payoff was random at date T. It depended on the state of the world. In the upstate of the world, the stock's payoff was S sub U. This was equal to the gross rate of return U multiplied by today's price S0. In the downstate of the world, the stock's price was S sub D. This was equal to the gross rate of return D times S sub zero, today's price. Okay. The second asset was the bond. The bond had a price of E to the negative RT. It was the discount factor. The face value of the bond was one. The bond was risk-free, which means that the bond's payoff in each day of the world was the same and equal to one. BU was equal to one and the payoff of the bond in the down state, BD, was equal to 1 as well. Okay. We now introduce a third asset to the model, which is the European call option. The price of the call option today, C0, is unknown. This is what we want to calculate. And the payoff to the call option depends on the payoff of the stock because that's its underlying asset, and hence it's going to be random at the capital T. In the upstate, we denote the call options payoff as C sub U. It's going to be the maximum of the stock price in the upstate, S sub U minus K and zero. In the downstate, we denote the call options payoff as C sub D. It's equal to the maximum of D times S zero minus K, the maximum of S sub D minus K and zero. Okay. Our goal is to solve for the call option price. To solve for the call option price, we're going to use a technique called pricing by replication. Now we've used pricing by replication before in this class. It was when we derived the no arbitrage forward price. Okay. And in general, pricing by replication is going to proceed in two steps. First, we're going to find a portfolio whose payoff at date T replicates the payoff of the derivative. So call this portfolio Y say it's called its payoff t, we're going to find a portfolio y sub t whose payoff matches the call options payoff at date t. Then what we're going to do is we're going to apply the law of one price. We're going to say if these two pay payoffs are equal, the law of one price tells us, law of one price implies, that their prices must be equal but at date zero. So we replicate the payoff of the call option using some securities. The price of this portfolio of securities is known, it's Y0, and by the law of one price, this must also be the price of the call option. For the forward contract, we did pricing by replication all in one shot. The difference with the call option is that we're going to need to do the pricing re replication in a state-by-state -state manner. Okay. So to do this, consider forming the following portfolio at date zero. You're going to own delta shares of the stock, and you're also going to own beta risk-free bonds, where each risk-free bond, just like in our model, has a face value of one. What we're going to call this portfolio is portfolio Y, just like I wrote down on the last slide. Okay. The payoff to the portfolio Y is going to be as follows. Remember, payoffs are always a date capital T. We always own delta shares and beta bonds. So the payoff to the portfolio in the upstate, Y sub U, is going to be equal to the number of shares we own, delta, 
times the price per share in the upstate, S sub U, equal to U times S0, plus the number of bonds we own, beta, times the price or the payoff per bond, which is 1. In the down state, we still own delta shares and beta bonds. The only thing that's going to be different is the payoff of the stock. Payoff to the portfolio in total is Y sub D. We own delta shares in the portfolio. Each share is worth S sub D. We also own beta bonds in the portfolio. The payoff of each is 1. Y sub U and Y sub D describe the payoff of the portfolio Y. And to price by replication, what we need to do is we need to set Y sub T, which is going to be comprised of the pair Y sub U, Y sub D, equal to the price, or I mean, excuse me, the payoff of Y sub T, equal to the payoff of the call option on that date, C, U, and C, D. Okay, once we find this portfolio that matches, we can then apply the law of one price. Okay, so how are we going to get this portfolio Y to match the payoffs of the call option at date T? What we're going to do is we're going to strategically choose the delta shares and the beta bonds that we buy. That is, we're going to choose a portfolio delta beta such that the portfolio is constructed to perfectly replicate the payoff of the call option. We'll then apply the law of one price after that point. To summarize, our situation is as follows. Three assets, stock, bond, call option. Prices and payoffs of the stock and the bond are known. The price of the call is what we want to calculate. To price the call option, we're going to form a portfolio Y. This portfolio Y is going to be comprised of delta shares and beta bonds. Okay. In the upstate, the portfolio is going to have a payoff of Y sub U equal to delta times S sub U plus beta times 1. In the downstate, the portfolio is going to have a payoff of Y sub D equal to delta times S sub D times beta plus beta times 1. Okay. We want to get this portfolio, Y sub U and Y sub D, to exactly match the call option in each state. Okay. And once we do that, we're going to strategically choose. We're going to do so by choosing delta beta to satisfy those two uh, systems, or those two equations right there. And once we know delta and beta, we can easily calculate the price of Y sub 0. It's just the number of shares we own times the price per share that it costs us to buy, plus the number of bonds we own times the discount bond price. Okay, delta times S sub 0 plus beta times e to the negative RT. Okay, so the next logical step now is to solve for this portfolio that's going to match the payoff of the call option in both states. To do this, we're going to set up a system of two linear equations and two unknowns. Okay. In the first equation, we're going to match the payoffs in the upstate. So in the first equation, we have the upstate. We're going to call this equation 1. Okay. In this equation, what we say is that the payoff to the call, C sub U, has to equal the payoff to the portfolio in this state. C sub U has to equal delta times S sub U plus beta times 1, which is equal to the payoff on the portfolio, Y sub U. Okay. In the second equation, we want to get the payoff to the call in the portfolio to be the same in the down state. We'll call this equation 2. The requirement is that the payoff to the, to the call option, C sub D, is equal to the number of shares we own times the stock price in the down state plus the number of bonds we own plus the payoff of the bond, which is equal to Y sub D. Okay. What are we doing here? We're forcing, we're going to choose delta and beta such that we force this portfolio, Y, to have the same exact payoff as the call option in both states of the world. We're going to choose delta and beta such that Y sub U, the payoff to the portfolio, equals C sub U. And we're going to choose delta and beta such as Y sub D equals C sub D. Okay, a priori, it's not clear whether this, uh, this solution existed, but now we see this is two linear equations and two unknowns. If there's no arbitrage, then this system has to have a unique solution. Okay, the solution is going to be as given as follows. It's going to tell us what delta and beta need to be. The delta is going to be equal to as follows. The number of shares you're going to own is going to be equal to the call price in the upstate, C sub U, minus the call payoff in the downstate, C sub D, over 
S sub U minus S sub D. This bottom part here is just S sub U minus S sub D. Okay. This is the number of shares we need to own to replicate the call payoff with our portfolio. And beta tells us the number of bonds we're going to need to own. It's equal to the call payoff CD times the gross rate of return U minus C sub U times the gross rate of return D all over U minus D. Okay. In other words, a portfolio of delta shares and beta bonds is going to replicate the payoff of the call option, where delta and beta are given by these two equations right here. You may be asking yourself, how did I arrive at this solution? How do we know exactly what delta and beta need to be? Well, the way you arrive at them is just to use sixth grade algebra. You've seen system of equations before like a system one and two. This is a system of linear equations. You've seen systems of linear equations before, probably in something like sixth grade all through high school. They usually come in the form of something like AX plus BY equals C and DX plus EY equals F. This is no different than that right here. It's just saying that delta times something plus beta times something is CU, and CD is equal to delta times something plus beta times something. And the two things we want to solve for are delta and beta. Okay, we can derive this solution as follows. I actually like to derive this to answer most of the questions because I think it's more intuitive. If we want to solve this system of equations, two linear equations and two unknowns, we just do the conventional method we use in sixth grade. We just add and subtract different equations from one another and isolate the variables. So suppose you subtract equation two from equation one. So you take equation one and you subtract equation two. What are you going to get? Well, you're going to get that equation one minus equation two on the left hand side is going to be CU minus CD. And on the right hand side, if you group like terms, it's going to be delta times the terms that are next to delta, u dot s0 minus d dot s0, plus whatever's in front of beta minus each other. Okay, simplify this out. This is going to be cu minus cd equals delta, like term is s0, u minus d. This beta, the 1 minus 1, will cancel each other. Solve this one linear equation and one unknown, you get delta cu minus cd over s sub 0, u minus d. Okay. This is exactly what I have written down in the slide. Then once you have delta, you've solved for one of the unknowns. You just plug it into either equation 1 or 2 to figure out what beta needs to be. So let's suppose we, we plug in delta to, say, uh, equation 1. Okay, So plug in delta to 1. Okay, What are we going to get? We're going to get that... C sub u is equal to C sub u minus C sub d. It's going to be delta right here over S0 u minus d times S0 plus beta times 1. Okay. We're going to cancel some like terms, the S0 is here. And we're going to shift everything to isolate beta on one side. This is going to imply that beta. Then we're going to scale up Cu by u minus d. Multiply and divide, get the ratios correct. Beta is going to be equal to C sub u times u minus d. We can write that probably easier like this. C sub u times u minus C sub u times d minus C sub u. Okay, this is going to be S0 times u. I'm sorry, I forgot about that right there plus c sub d dot u over u minus d. Okay, combine like terms over here. What you're going to get is that beta is equal to, I'll cancel them out for you, c sub u dot u cancels, c sub u dot u cancels. This is going to be c sub u dot u minus c sub d, whoops, c sub d dot u minus c sub u dot d over u minus d. Okay, and that's exactly what we have in the slide. Okay, so the way you get 
the delta and beta, there are two ways to essentially go about solving problems in this class when we do binomial model option pricing. The first way is the plug and chug. Okay, you just memorize what delta and beta are for the call option. And then whenever you get the binomial model inputs, like we have on this slide right here, you just plug them right into these two formulas and you go about your task when it comes to finding the replicating portfolio. The second way, which I prefer, is to just remember that you're working with a system of two linear equations and two unknowns. It'll have a unique solution as long as no arbitrage holds. And you can back out delta and beta every time without having to go about memorizing anything. Ideally, you do both, and then you can compare your answers to check if you have anything wrong. Okay, for those of you that have taken uh, linear algebra, you can also solve this system in other ways. You can solve it in terms of a matrix. So you can set up a vector, C sub U, C sub D, equals a vector that, or a matrix that says U dot S0 and 1, D dot S0 and 1, multiplied by delta and beta right here. You call this matrix X. And what you can back out is that delta beta, for those of you that taking in linear algebra, is going to be equal to the inverse of that matrix X times C sub U times C sub D. Okay. So we know that the replicating portfolio then is comprised of delta shares and beta bonds, where the delta shares equation is given in the slide, and so is the beta bonds equation. If we own this portfolio, then the payoff is going to match the payoff to the call in every state of the world. And so the only thing left to do now that we know that y sub t is equal to c sub t is to apply the law of one price to show that y sub 0 is equal to c sub 0. The price of y sub 0 will be known, which will allow us to then calculate the price c sub 0. Okay? So the law of one price says since the payoffs of these two portfolios are equal, they must have the same price. So the price of the call today, C sub 0, has to equal the price of the replicating portfolio today, Y sub 0. So to get the call price, we just plug in our inputs. C sub 0 has to equal Y sub 0. Well, Y sub 0 is a portfolio that holds delta shares and beta bonds. Each share costs S0. Each bond costs the discount factor. In the previous slide, we solved for delta and beta, right? So delta was equal to... C sub U minus C sub D over S U minus S D. Okay. And then in the last slide, we also solve for beta. Plug in delta and beta. And what that's going to give us is the call price. So the call price is given by this long equation here. It's very long. It's a messy equation. But once we memorize delta and beta, we don't really need to know much else other than it's the price of this portfolio instead of the payoff. Okay. And... In general, it's, it's somewhat messy, but it's very straightforward in a sense. Okay? So to summarize, what did we do? We wanted to calculate the price of a European call option. I'll start from the beginning. We did so by first setting up our model, getting the payoffs, and then we did something called pricing by replication. We found a portfolio Y, which is comprised of delta shares and beta bonds, which replicated the payoff of the call at date capital T. The number of shares and bonds we need to own, we derived in the slide. And then we just applied the law of one price to back out the price of the call option at date zero. Right? Pretty simple, right? Just like forward pricing, but just a little bit different. Okay? So let's do a couple of practice problems to reinforce our knowledge. I'll give you a minute or two to read this question, and then I will solve.
All right, so the problem statement is as follows. So we are in a binomial world. There are two dates, zero and one year from now, and there's two states at date one, okay? The up state and the down state, okay? We don't know what the state will be today at date zero, but we do know it'll be either one of these two. Consider Red Rock Resorts, okay, from my home city of Las Vegas, RRR. Current price of Red Rock Resorts is $1. And the payoff to Red Rock Resorts, it's a non-dividend paying stock, is going to be random. It's either going to be S sub U equals $2 in the upstate, or S sub D equals one half dollar in the downstate. Continuously compounded risk-free rate is 0%, no arbitrage. And what we want to do is we want to price a European call option with a strike of one, matures at date one on Red Rock Resorts. Our goal is to do this pricing in three steps. First, we'll calculate the payoff of this call option in both states. We'll write down the replicating portfolio, and then we'll plug everything in to get the price. Okay, so let's start by writing down our inputs. We'll draw out the binomial tree. Two dates, zero, and capital T equals one year from now. Okay, today, we know what to, what's going on, it's a singleton, but in the future, it's unknown, okay? What's going on in the future is not known to us. We do know, however, it'll be one of two states, either up or down, okay? But the payoffs of certain securities are going to vary based in these different states, okay? We have three assets in the model. The first is a stock, the second is a bond, and the third is a call option. The stock has a price of S0 equal to 1, Red Rock Resorts. Bond has a price of E to the negative RT. Risk-free rate is 0, 1 year to maturity, so the bond price is just 1. Okay. Price of the call, C0, is unknown today. This is what we want to solve for. The payoffs to the stock depend on the state of the world. In the upstate, the payoff is S sub U it's equal to 2. This implies that the gross rate of return, u, is equal to su over s0, which is equal to 2 over 1, which is 2. In the down state, the stock's payoff is s sub d. It's equal to 1 half. This implies that the gross rate of return in the down state, equal to s sub d over s0, is just equal to 1 half. It's 1 half over 1. Okay, the bond has payoffs that are constant in both states. In the upstate, it's BU equals to one. In the downstate, it's BD equals to one. And this is because it's risk-free. In the first priority of the problem, we want to go out and use this information to calculate the payoffs of the call option in states U and D. Okay, so the payoff to the call depends on the payoff of the stock in each state. We'll write down the formulas down here. So in the upstate, the call options payoff is going to be the maximum of the stock price minus the strike price. Stock price in the upstate is S sub U. Strike price is K and zero. Plug in our inputs. Stock price in the upstate is two. Strike price on the call is one. So the maximum of two minus one and zero is just equal to one, okay, which is the payoff of the call in the upstate. So payoff of the call in the upstate, C sub U, is equal to one. Let's move on to the downstate, C sub D. Payoff to the call is maximum of the stock price in the downstate, S sub D minus the strike, zero. This is equal to the max A of S sub D, one half minus one, zero, which is zero. Okay, so we plug that into the model right here. Okay, so now we have all the information we need to solve the problem. We have the cost payoffs. We have the stocks payoffs, we have the bonds payoffs, we know the risk-free rate and the gross rates of return. In part two, what we want to do is we want to solve for the replicating portfolio of stock and bond to replicate the call options payoffs. This means we need to calculate delta and beta. We can do this in either of, one, in either of two ways. We'll do them both just so we understand what's going on. The first is the plug and chug method, which is just to memorize the formula and then go out and plug everything in. Okay, plug and chug methods as follows. Memorize that delta is equal to C sub U minus C sub D over S zero U minus D. 
and we just plug in inputs. C sub u is 1, C sub d is 0, S sub 0 is 1, u is 2, and what do we have? S sub in, uh, d is 1 half. Okay, this is going to be 1 over 3 halves, okay, which is going to be equal to 2 thirds. Then when we want to calculate beta, what do we do? Just plug and chug again. C sub D times U minus C sub U times D over U minus D. Plug and chug, plug and chug. 0 times 2 minus 1 times 1 half over 2 minus 1 half. The top's going to be minus 1 half, right? The bottom's going to be 3 halves. Okay, do some cross cancellation. This is minus one thirds. Thus, the replicating portfolio is as follows. If you want to construct a portfolio of stocks and bonds that matches the call options payoff in every state, what you're going to do is you're going to go out and you're going to own two thirds of a share of stock. And you're going to go out and you're going to own or you're going to short one third of a unit of the bonds. Okay, don't believe me? Write down the payoffs in each state with these proportions, and you'll see that they are the exact same. Okay, I told you I'd solve this in two ways. The other way is that we solve it with a system of equations. We're going to show we get the same exact results. Okay, system of equations approach requires the following. We have two equations, one and two. We require the call options payoffs in both states equals the replicating portfolio, and we solve for delta and beta. So in equation one, we equate the upstate, CU equals delta dot U dot S zero plus beta times one. The downstate, we say C sub D equals delta dot D dot S zero plus beta times one. Let's plug in our inputs. We know that C sub U in the upstate is one. We know that C sub D in the downstate is zero. We're solving for delta, so this remains unknown in both cases. The stock price in the upstate is 2 in the first equation, and the downstate is 1 half. Beta bonds is also a variable, free variable. We're solving for that. Payoff to the bond is the same in both cases. We want to solve for delta and beta. What we're going to do is we're just going to use our sixth grade algebra. So we're going to subtract equation 2 from equation 1. This is going to give us 1 minus 0 equals delta times 2 minus 1 half plus beta times 1 minus 1, which implies the left-hand side is going to be 1, the right-hand side is going to be 0 times beta, plus delta times 3 halves. So invert that, so delta has to be equal to 2 thirds, which exactly matches what we have above. Okay, so we're reassured on our answer. Okay, now we're just going to, to find beta, we've solved for delta, we're going to plug delta into either equation 1 or 2, and it's going to become one linear equation in one unknown. So it might be easiest to plug it into equation 2. So let's try that. Plug in delta to 2. What we're going to get, call options payoff in the down state is 0, equals delta. We know that's 2 thirds now, times 1 half, plus beta times 1. This simplifies to 1 third plus beta equals zero. This implies that beta equal to negative one third. Okay, is this right? Let's look. Yep, our answer agrees in both cases. So portfolio that's long, two thirds share, shorts one third of a bond, it's going to replicate the payoff on the call. Okay, in the final step of the problem, part three, what we're going to do is use this information to calculate the option price. The call option price, let's do it the replicating portfolio way, C sub 0 is equal to the price of the replicating portfolio Y0. This is equal to delta times S0 plus beta times 1, price of the replicating portfolio. And we know all the inputs here. Delta is equal to what? It's 2 thirds. Share price at date 1 on Red Rock Resorts is 1 plus beta, it's negative 1 third times 1. This means that the call option price is 1 third. Okay. Alternatively, you can do the plug and chug method as well. If you do the plug and chug method, all you do is you say C sub 0 
is equal to exactly what that formula said, c sub u minus c sub d, s sub 0 u minus d times s0 plus c sub d dot u minus c sub u dot d over u minus d times e to the negative rt. Plug in everything here, you're going to get 1 minus 0 over 1, 2 minus 1 half times 1 plus 0 dot 2 minus 1 dot 1 half over 2 minus 1 half times 1. You're going to get it's the same exact thing. Okay, it's good to verify both ways though, so you know that your solution is correct. That's the answer to the problem as follows. The no arbitrage call option price is C0 equals to one third. Okay, the replicating portfolio is long, two thirds shares, and short, one third bonds. Okay, simple, right? Takes a while, it's kind of messy, but the logic is intuitive and the calculations are straightforward. It's nothing but fractions and sixth grade algebra. So now what do we do? Final part of the problem is to then, uh, so there's the answer. Now let's do one more practice problem. I'll give you a few minutes to read and we will work through it. Okay, so the problem statement is as follows. We're still in a binomial world. There's two dates, 0 and 1. And at date 1, which is the future state, there are two possible states of the world, U and D, the up and the down state. Consider Peloton stock, another hot stock during the coronavirus. Peloton trades at $20 per share today, does not pay dividends, and the payoff to Peloton is a random variable at date T or 1. Okay. This time, instead of getting SU and SD, we're given the gross rates of return, which in all honesty is basically the same exact thing. We know the gross rate of return in the up state is either 1.5 or 1 half in the down state. Continuously compound risk-free interest rate is 0.1%. In this case, no arbitrage. We have a European call option on Peloton with a strike of 25, maturity of one year. We want to know the price of the call option, and then we want to price an otherwise identical, excuse me, this was a typo on the slides. We want to price an otherwise identical put option. Okay, so price the call, then price a put, which we haven't learned how to do yet, actually. Okay, so we'll start by writing down our inputs in the binomial model. We'll write down the binomial tree, two dates, zero and capital T, one year from now. Start off at a singleton, date zero. Two possible states at date capital T equals to one. Okay, the up state U or the down state D. There's three assets, the stock, the bond, and the call option. There's actually gonna be a put at the very end. Stock has a price of S0 equals 20, Peloton stock. The bond has a price of B0 equals E to the negative R, 1% times T. This is approximately equal to 0 0.99. Call option price is unknown, and later we're going to want to put option as well, but we'll hold off from now. The strike on these options is equal to 25. Okay. The payoffs to the stock depend on the state of the world. They're as follows. In the upstate, the stock's payoff is S sub U. It's equal to U dot S sub 0. We're given U. 
it's equal to 1.5. Stock price today is 20. So the payoff to the stock in the upstate is 30. In the downstate, the payoff is as follows. It's D times S sub zero. D is equal to 1 half. S sub zero is 20. So the payoff is S sub D equal to 10. Payoff to the bond in the upstate is BU equal to 1. And BD in the downstate of 1 as well does not vary based on the state. It's risk-free. Okay. To solve this problem, we want to price the call option, European call option. To do this, the one final piece of information we need is the call options payoffs, okay? CU and CD, okay? Think about the call options payoff first in the upstate. It's equal to the maximum of the stock price in the upstate, 30 minus the strike K, 20 and zero. This is equal to the maximum of 10 and zero, which is 10. In the downstate, the call options price is C sub D, or the payoff, excuse me, it's the maximum of the call options payoff or the stock's payoff in the downstate, which is 10, minus the strike price, 20 and zero. This is the maximum of negative 10 and zero, which is zero. So we fill this into our model. Payoff of the call option in the upstate is 10. Payoff of the call option in the downstate is zero. And now we have everything we need to solve the problem. So to find out the price of the European call option, we can start by doing the following, okay? We're just going to use the plug and chug method, okay? So I implore you to solve it using the other way as well so you get some practice on this. But for the interest of time on this lecture video, we're just going to use the plug and chug method. So if we memorize the formula, the call price, no arbitrage price, is equal to CU minus CD over S0 U minus D. This is the delta. It's the number of shares we own times the price per share S0 plus CD times U minus CU dot D over U minus D. This is the beta, the number of bonds we own, times the price per bond E to the negative R times T. Okay, plug in our inputs here. Call options payoff in the upstate is what? It's going to be equal to 10, or let's see, uh, let's see, what do we have? Oh, 1.5. Okay, it's going to be equal to 10. Okay, and then we're going to subtract the call options payoff in the downstate, which is zero. Okay, and then we're going to divide this by S sub zero, which is going to be equal to 20. I believe, yep, 20 times U minus D. So 3 halves minus 1 half, okay? Oh, excuse me, the strike on the call, I believe, was actually 25, okay? Which one? Oh, yes, it is, okay? So I apologize, the strike on the call is actually 25. So let's go back and fix that. Okay, so just adjust our payoffs a little bit. The payoff is instead the call option in the upstate is going to be five. Payoff of the call option in the downstate is going to be zero. And so the payoff in the upstate is going to be five. And the payoff in the downstate is going to be zero. Okay, this changes our calculation over here just a little bit. Okay, it's going to be equal to five minus zero over 20 times three halves minus one half, okay? Times S sub zero, 20, plus C sub D, zero times three halves, minus C sub U, five times D, one half, over three halves minus one half, times E negative RT, we said this is 0 0.99. Okay, work this out, what are we gonna get? So this is going to be, we can start canceling some like terms, 20 will cancel with 20. Okay. 3 halves minus 1 half is equal to 1. 3 halves minus 1 half is 1. This is 0 up here. This is minus 2.5. So you're going to have 5 minus okay, 2.5 times 0 0.99. What you're going to see is that the call option price is going to be equal to 2.525. Okay, so what do we say? We say that the no arbitrage 
call option price is C0 equal to 2.525. Okay. Sorry about that little mistake. It's getting late in the day. Okay. So now what do we do in the third part or the second part? We've calculated the price of the call option using no arbitrage arguments in the binomial option pricing model. We now want to price an otherwise identical put option. Okay, so how do we do this? We've run into a little bit of a problem here. Okay, we know that we want to price an otherwise identical put. The put has a strike of k equal to 25. It has a maturity of 1 as well. But we don't know the formulas yet for how to get a put options price. We have two options. One is we could just give up and just accept that we don't know the formula. The other is we could think about what tools we have at our disposal. Okay? One of our most powerful tools is put call parity. Remember that put call parity related the put and the call prices to one another. It said that the price of the protective put is equal to the price of the fiduciary call. Okay, that might be useful here, so let's just write it out. So put call parity says that the price of the protective put, P sub 0 plus S0, equals the price of the fiduciary call, C0 plus K e to the negative R times T. We can solve this equation for the put price, P0 equals C0 plus K e to the negative R times T minus S0. And we know all the stuff on the right-hand side, so actually we can find the put price if we, we just do a little bit of arithmetic. Call price, we know no arbitrage call price is 2.525. The strike is 25 on this option. The discount rate is 1% times maturity of one year minus the stock price today is 20. What we're going to see, plug in inputs, use your calculators. This is going to be right around 7.276. So the no arbitrage put price is 7.276. Okay. We'll write that down as P0 equals that. Okay. Very straightforward. So we didn't know what the put price formula is. We're going to learn about that in the very next lecture topic. But what we saw was we could use put call parity and arrive at uh, the result we want anyways. Okay, so that wraps up the second part of lecture 11. Let's take a quick break and we will resume the lecture in the next video.